we've got everything laid out for our dash cam. Once again, we're installing an Asdome M300. So that is a front and rear camera. So we have our front camera here. We have our rear camera. And then we have the cable that goes between the front and rear camera. So it's got this little jack, which plugs into the side here. So in the AV port, and then the USB port is where the power supply goes. It comes with an SD card already pre-installed. Does need to be formatted. The other things you get in the box is an additional piece of double-sided tape for the rear camera, an additional bracket with double-sided tape for the front camera, two of these mounting strips. So this is just a, um, it's basically like a screen protector for a phone, just a plastic screen protector. It goes on the windscreen and it's a bit hard to see, but there's a dotted outline there, which is where you put the the uh, camera base on. Uh, that allows you to pull this off um, and try and reinstall it into another car. So I don't bother putting those on. Um, you've got a spare base plate. So if you need to reinstall it, you can reinstall it with that. Uh, obviously the instructions, we have trim tool and all these little cable tidies. Um, they don't get used. And then it comes with the cigarette lighter type adapter for the USB for the power supply, uh, which handily has an additional USB out on it. So if you do use that and you're trying to use a phone charger at the same time, then you've got that ability. Uh, we won't be using that. We have this little kit here. So it's a hard wire kit, which gives us an additional function of parking mode for the, the dash cam. So when you've turned the power off, so you, and on the connections you've got uh, the accessories line, the battery line, and negative obviously. Um, so when you turn the, the car off, uh, you still have power coming through the yellow accessory battery. And that allows the, um, the camera to, to maintain parking mode. So if it uh, notices an impact, so on and so forth, it's not relying on batteries to, um, to keep recording and keep you covered. So I'll bust this kit open and, and show you what's involved in the kit. And I'll obviously show you how to install it. In the kit, you have the driver. So there's your power wires. So you've got two power wires and a negative wire. And then there's the USB connector. So this can mount near your fuse panel. Um, sorry. These little things here, you take a fuse out, you plug this in, put the fuse for that circuit back into the fuse holder. And then the top one here, it taps off that to this line here. So it's pretty important not to use critical stuff like airbags, engine control and so on and so forth for those circuits. So I typically use radio power, which is accessories power, and <clears throat> the dome light. So your interior lights, the interior lights are on battery. So that way, worst case, there's something wrong with this, um, it's not gonna affect the operation of your interior lights. Now, it, it'll only, sorry, it'll only affect the operation of your interior lights or your radio. So, um, safest way to go about it is just use non-safety critical things or non-operational things all right so it's got different fittings here for different types of fuses so you got micro fuses standard laid fuses uh, mini fuses so and there's two of each one so it's just a matter of working out which style of, of fuse that car has using that that one so now it comes with the fuse for the, the dash cam. There's a heap of them, different types. So there's two of each type. So you got the micros, midis, minis, and the standard blade fuse. All right, you've got a fuse removable tool. Um, hit and miss whether that works all right. And another trim tool. 
So this is a very good kit. It's very, very simple to install. It takes minimal effort and minimal time to, um, to get it done. And you get a much more professional finish. Above that, you, know, you have your parking mode. So instructions come with it. So this is a standard type kit. It's not actually a, uh, an Asdome power kit. Um, wiring diagram, so pretty simple. So it can be used for other things. Now, if you're ordering it, make sure you order the correct type of USB socket, okay? The only qualm I have with this kit is that <coughs> due to the locations on the, the edge of the dash cam, the way it sits, when it plugs into the USB, it runs back past the AV port. So if you're using your rear dash cam, it's a bit of a pain. So what I do is I trim these flexi points off to be able to bend it a bit quicker. Um, and that gives them enough room past the port. So I'll show you that once I've got it all in there anyway. Okay, so I'm gonna run this cable through here. So it's worth noting that I haven't done anything with this yet. It's already hanging down. So there's a, a notch out. I don't know what that's for. Could have been someone else's dodgy installation at some point. Um, you can see, that, oh yeah, here we go. Look. I've got cables sitting in there cut off. So I'm not sure what the story is with that. That's all right. So <clears throat> I'm gonna run through here. I'll push this cable, this yellow tongue through, sorry, the red tongue. It's gonna go all the way up to the front. All going well. We can now pop around. And slide it up here. Feel it. There we go. So pretty simple. It's in through the roof space and it's coming out the back. So we're going to run the cable from front to back. Um, so this is the cable for the, the dash cam. And this is the cable for the reverse camera. So I'm going to run the two together. Okay, got them taped on. So I've got the dash cam one taped on to the, the rear, view, rear view camera. So I'm just going to push it slack up. And then pop up the back. Carefully pull this out. So, yeah, sometimes if it gets stuck like that, you can push it in a bit and flip it over. Might not go one way, might go the other way better. There we go. And that's it. So we'll pull out what slack we need. And we've got the cable hanging out the front there. So it's easy to pull back slack. So make, make sure you've got plenty here and uh, we can get it through. So we're going to pop this out of here. Okay, so we've got our hole there. We'll just untape these cables. So I've got this cable through here. You could actually, if you wanted to, because this is actually a pretty big hole, you could have fed your snake from here straight to the front instead of going through here. Uh, probably safer for your, your hood lining. If you have a look in through here. I can snake it around. Just inside here. Is 
is air cable. Make sure that when you're pulling it through, you don't do something silly like looping this around something or whatever, because then you'll have to pull it back out. All right, so I've got plenty of slack there for my dash cam, and uh, I'm going to need another probably meter and a half to come up here, and along here, and along here, and around up to here to where my reverse camera is going to go. All right, so. This other cable that was cut off in there, I'm not sure what that's for, but it looks like it might have been added on afterwards here. So that's the same cable, you can see it pulling through there. Um, but yeah, it's a bit of an odd one, I'm not sure what the story is of that. Because the rest of the loom actually looks pretty, uh, pretty solid, so if I can find something else that's the reason why it's cut off. Anyway, so pull this out here. Feeding through here can be very difficult. Um, you've got a fair size loom here as it is, and there's obviously not super massive room in there. Um, Pass through all these corrugations and convolutions. So easiest thing is to push it in a bit bunch these convolutions or corrugations up, pinch it, pull it through, bunch them up, pinch it, pull it through, bunch it up, pinch it, pull it through, so on and so forth until we get it all the way to the end. And then you can carefully pull the slack through. If if it looks tight like this, I think I might use a bit of, of um, cable lubricant. Uh, you can just use dish soap, that's all fine. Um, even silicon spray, something like that, that uh, takes off the, the friction gives a bit of lubricant to the to the cable and uh, and removes the friction uh, between the cable and everything so it'll slip through significantly easier okay I couldn't uh, hold the phone and do everything at the same time uh, but yeah I couldn't couldn't feed the, the fat end in straight through so what I actually did was fed, fed in the basically a loop of the cable uh, I pushed the um, the dash cam cable through uh, with that other cable pulled back and then drag that back through because obviously it's easier to pull that through than what it is trying to get these sharp edges through all the time all right so just little tips like that can make a, a big difference now we've got that through we can pull the slack up all right and uh and get it through the tailgate all right so i just mounted this dash cam camera so you'll see, I didn't mount it on the line, yeah? So these lines get hot. It's a, the heater, the mister for the back window. They get hot, you don't want it to be on that line. At least a couple of mil off. So that's sort of borderline. I wouldn't I wouldn't take it any closer than that. Definitely not across it, all right? Um, try and, if you can, work out the angle um, to make sure that when you close the boot or the tailgate or whatever it is, that the camera is not going to be looking at one of these lines um, obstructing your view and skewing your view so that's focused up a little bit at the moment so if you see when i'm pretty level it's pretty pretty clear between those two lines so i just need to adjust that camera it's not in its final location it's just it's taped into place but that that barrel can roll All right, i'll show you that on the inside there now so this is something that needs to be fine-tuned once it's all together, but that can roll to adjust the angle. Um, take the uh, protective coating off so you can actually see through it. And then, yeah, that'll, that'll, that can be adjusted later. This will go just tuck neatly behind it like that in through the trim panel and plug into the, the camera cable. So we'll just plug these two together
okay so this plug doesn't fit quite well in the um the dash cam uh i'll show you what the story is so the orientation of the usb plug means that when you plug it in it goes past the av socket so what i do is trim this part off and then that can bend out of the way and this is the sort of thing you end up with okay from the dash cam i've just taped those two cables up together so it looks neater uh, our power wire comes along tucked up in top of the hood line in there it's running down in behind this pillar trim down the a pillar and it will come down in behind these trim panels across through the dash the fuse panels on the other side and i've actually got to wire this stereo and in hardwire it anyway so i'm just going to come to here instead um, of the fuse panel so that will mitigate all of these fuses um but it's uh it's definitely a uh a good place to put it we've got power there we've got switched power on the accessories uh, so battery power accessories power and negatives which I've, I've got a solder anyway so uh, just keep it all together and keep it keep it together it makes it easier we've got our power wires connected at this point it's just uh doing everything on the asdo app so we've got power all, all connected batteries reconnected um yeah the main thing you need to remember when you're doing uh working with the asdo map is that it you can't have the mobile data for the app turned on so you've got to make sure that's off otherwise you'll log on and you won't be able to see the picture okay so the reason you can't see the picture uh, is because you've got mobile data and uh, it causes other dramas too but everything else is just in the asdo map so that's it mate uh, give it a go it's not hard to to run a, a dash cam as you saw there uh, that's an alternative method with with connection as far as complete hard wiring and um you know that's pretty simple it's pretty cheap um these kits at the moment i'm, I'm getting for about 120 130 dollars in australia here so that's that's pretty good in uh early 2024 all right i'll uh, see you on the next one